Hey, hey, happy Thursday, my friends. It's a wet and rainy day here on the Cape, perfect for crafting. And I am going to do two things at once today. Look at me. Um, one, I'm gonna start designing my Christmas cards. Go figure. So I actually do about 300, you guys, but I get bored doing the same ones over and over again. So I do about 50 of each. So, um, and actually I say I get bored, but I generally design them and then I usually have somebody help me create them because it's a lot of work when I'm still trying to run a business, right? So um, I kind of, I don't know, I, I have a love-hate relationship with um, mass producing things, but I do sometimes like it just to kind of be mindless and in the moment, but um, I also sometimes just get really bored of doing the same thing over and over again. So I totally relate to those of you that said you like to do all different designs. But when you're doing 300, <laughs> all different designs is kind of out of the question, right? So, hey, Cindy. Um, so two, so we're going to do two things with today. Like I said, first is we're going to start the creation of Jen's Christmas cards. And two, I'm going to give you six tips for mass producing your own holiday cards. So as somebody who mass produces cards every year for the holiday, um, I do a combination usually of mass producing and pulling all of my samples from all my videos and stuff. But this year I'm gonna try and be really good and design, I think I need six, yeah, six individual cards for um, the Christmas cards this year. Hey guys, hey Elizabeth, hey Susan. Hey, Jolene. Um, so yeah, so that's what we're going to do today. We're going to design a card. I'm going to give you the complete bundle you need in order to be able to um, design the card I'm designing. If you want to use the same one, I'm totally cool with that. Just know you may get it in the mail. <laughs> um, and then we will also do some tips for how to get that all put together. So let me turn this around and I'm going to go ahead and start with what I'm assuming you have on hand because I think most of you are already crafters. So you should have some basic stuff and then I'll show you what we're ordering for our mass production and then I will show you uh, the card. Well, I'm not going to show it to you because I haven't made it yet. We're going to make it together. All right, so let's go around, turn this around and get started. Hang on one second while I get you set up. So I'm hoping this will be super beneficial for you guys and it will be productive for me. So that is always good. Uh, but just keep in mind, you may get a sneak peek of my holiday card. Um, I send about 300. It depends on, I usually go back about six months. And if you've ordered with me within six months, um, I usually send Christmas cards to you. But again, it depends on the amount. I try and limit it to 300, so um, I have to kind of change my rules <laughs> based on what's happening. So let's start with, and actually this is the wrong pile to start with, so let me move this out of the way. Let me start with what I'm gonna assume you already have, okay? So um, let's assume you already have adhesive. You already have a bone holder. This is a nice to have. This is not a have to have. You already have a paper trimmer. You already have black ink and white paper. And that's kind of the basic of what your basic kit should have. So if you don't already have this, you'll have to add it to the bundle that I'm gonna show you. Um, but I think most of you probably do. The only other thing I'm pulling from my stash is, um, <clears throat> a piece of scrap paper. This could be orange or yellow or any color. Um, I actually don't know if this is the color I'm gonna use. I have to look at the paper a little bit. Um, I may end up using something different. But you just need a scrap piece of paper for the penguin feet. Everything else is gonna be stamped and um, we won't need anything for that. So so that's your, your, your basic toolkit, black ink, adhesive, white cardstock, and paper trimmer. So I'm assuming you already have that and a bone folder. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add our little bundle. Mm -hmm. And of course I did this so that um, when we add in up our bundle of stuff, you're gonna be able to qualify for free paper, which is part of what we need, okay? So first up, you're gonna want some cardstock. So I am using soft sea foam cardstock. Now remember, we're already assuming you have white cardstock, okay? Um, we're gonna use uh, one um, 
bundle, one stamp or bundle. You don't have to do a bundle. I did a, a, a bundle. So I'm doing Penguin Place. Um, this is that one that we all fell in love with, right? It's got the cute little penguin and the coordinating punch. So that's the one I'm going to use for this card. I'm throwing in an embellishment. So these are the in-color jewels. We're going to need some envelopes. So those are basic white. And then one ink pad. I think it's going to be, again, I think it's going to be pumpkin pie, but I'm not 100% sure. I may change this out um, based on whatever color I use for his feet. So I may make it off color like the Fresh Freezer or something, or I may actually do like a yellow instead. But we'll, we'll figure that out once we get there. So that is what we have to order. When we order this, it comes to, oh, I think, I don't think I actually fixed my numbers. Um, 875. That's seven fifty. That's thirty one fifty. That's oh yeah, actually it is gonna be. I think it's gonna be right. So sixty two twenty five is what I believe this all comes to, right? Which means we qualify for celebration. So we're gonna add in the penguin paper. Okay. So this is the basis for our card. And again, I haven't designed this. We're gonna do that together. But we're gonna. This is what we're gonna use to do it. Okay. So let me clear this off. Okay, we're going to start with one of our basics, which is a paper trimmer. So as I go through this, I'm going to give you your six tips for um, designing or mass producing holiday cards. So first tip number one is to pick a simple design. So I am going to do that. I'm going to do a very simple design because that's going to make our lives so much easier. Okay, so... Um, before I cut all of this, I will share a tip in a second, but I'm going to design it first. So I don't always, um, no, I very rarely will design, cut everything before I've completely designed the card. Because if I don't like it, I don't want to cut. I might end up just changing my mind and using white cardstock or on the base or something. So I'll probably design it first, and then I cut everything. But for now, let's just go ahead and cut this. So I cut my cardstock. You saw what I just did. I took an eight and a half by 11 on the long side and I cut it at five and a half. That gives me two card bases. So I'm doing a side fold card or um, it could be this way too, but I'm probably gonna do side fold, we'll see. Now I'm gonna score it while I have it. Okay, so this is the base of my card. Simple, simple, that's the way that goes. Okay, tip number two, is to be really resourceful with your pattern paper. Hi everyone, thanks so much for joining me. We're doing six tips for mass producing your holiday cards, okay? So um, you wanna be really resourceful with your patterned paper. And what I mean by that is we wanna do a measurement that will allow us to get the most amount of pieces out of the cardstock without a lot of waste and making the best use of that paper okay so let's go ahead and look at this so i'm using soft seafoam as my base let me just look at what i want to do for i love these little penguin ones they're so cute i'm just looking to see which pattern i'm gonna use i have a general idea of what i want to do so i'm probably going to just do a simple pattern because i want to do a stamped um a stamped penguin as my focal point so what we're doing is we're going to use a little bit of the paper for added interest and then we're going to stamp a little focal point and okay so I think I'm gonna actually use the stripe I think that's gonna be bold enough I think it'll be fun and I just love it so let's do that so that's gonna be the piece of paper I use now in order to cut this the best there's a couple of um, measurements I'm gonna give you that would work really well but there's probably many more you could do for me I love using either 3 by 4 for my pattern paper because that's gonna give me 12 pieces out of one sheet and you get two sheets in each pack right so that would give me 24 cards that would be half of what I need right there so I may end up having to do um, bits of 24 although I will tell you I have multiple packs of this penguin paper already so I can totally do 50 of these um, but if you only have one pack you'd be able to get 24 pieces with the two sheets that are in there of course you could do right and I recommend you do um, so maybe I do 24 with this pattern and then I do 24 with this pattern right or a different pattern so you could do that too like this one might be a cute pattern to use too it's a little bit too much green probably um, so maybe this one would be better, but anyway, I'm going to stick to this one right now. So we're going to do, <clears throat> so 
we're going to do three by four for this card because I kind of have an idea in my head of what I want this to look like. But you could do um, also another good measurement to do is two by five and a half. That gives you 12 pieces as well. That would give you a strip. So it would be something similar to this sketch. So you would have this little strip of pattern paper and then you could do whatever you wanted with the card stock. So again, we have the soft sea foam and the white. You could recreate this sketch using this same thing, right? So it's again, we're, we're trying to get the most out of our pattern paper. With three by four, we actually have no waste, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and stick this in my trimmer and I'm gonna go ahead and cut this all up because I know that even if I don't like this card design, I know I can use three by four pieces without a problem because it is a staple um, size that I use, okay? So let me just go ahead cut this. We're going to cut it all down. So um, tip number three when you're designing holiday cards for mass producing is to make sure you keep the stamping to a minimum. What? Did I just say that? <laughs> I did. Um, but remember, we're doing tons of um, cards, so we don't want to have to do 17 million stamps on each card. So that's my tip number three. And tip number four is going to be equally shocking, you guys. Stay away from die cutting. I know, I know. It's really hard because we love all of those really pretty intricate dies. But when you're producing 50 or more cards, that's just going to save you a lot of heartache. Now, with that said, for those special people like those family members and, you know, really close friends, then we totally want to pull out all the stops and make a really fancy, fun card. Um, these are going to be just as fun. They're just going to be a little bit simpler so we can mass produce them, okay? Hey, Beverly. Um, no worries. We're just getting started. Okay, so that's tip number one, two, and three, right? And actually four. So pick a simple design, which I'm going to show you. One, um, be resourceful with how you're cutting your paper, especially your pattern paper. So you want divisible by um, 12, right? So three by four is great. Two by five and a half is great. You could probably do other measurements that, you know, my brain won't do off the top of my head. Also, you want to keep the stamping to a minimum. And then number four, stay away from die cutting. And tip number five, we'll get to in a second. But let's do this first. So you can actually see here, this is a pat, this is a design I use a lot. So this is the same kind of design that we're going to do here. I used the base. This one I actually embossed the bottom layer, but remember we're staying away from die, from the big shotting machine because, or the stamp and cut and emboss because it is a little more tedious and time consuming, right? So um, I'm not going to do that layer. I'm just doing the base layer, but you can see this pattern paper is three by four and this layer here is three and a quarter by four and a quarter, which is also very resourceful with your cardstock. Okay, so I'm going to do a layer with this. Now remember... I already assumed at the beginning that you have white cardstock. So that's part of our basic toolkit. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a piece of white cardstock. And we're going to cut this right in a half, right? So on the short side. So on the long side, if you cut it in half, you get um, two card bases that are five and a half by eight and a half. If you do it on the short side, you're going to cut it at four and a quarter. And that would also give you two card bases, but they're top fold, right? We're not going to do card bases, though. We're doing mats for these little pieces. So four and a quarter by three and a quarter. Because remember, this is three by four, so we're going to add a quarter of an inch to both sides. So three by four, so it's three and a quarter by four and a quarter. So I cut that at four and a quarter, and this is going to be three and a quarter. And so you can see, if I go ahead, I'm going to cut the rest of this piece. I get six pieces out of one cardstock, and this is all the waste I have. And this isn't going to be waste because we could end up using this as our sentiment, right? We'll see how we end up. So let me just cut the rest of this piece too. So when you see that I'm cutting this, we're getting <clears throat> six mats out of this. So that's six cards, and we have two little scrap pieces, so very little waste. And like I said, these are not going to be waste because we can use those as sentiment pieces, okay? So there's that. All right, so now I have the basic layout of my card. So we're going to go ahead. This is going to get layered to here. You know what I didn't add into my kit, and I'm going to have probably a really hard time not using it, 
is um, ribbon. So I'm almost tempted. I may actually switch out my um, bling go figure for ribbon because I'm trying to keep the price point a little bit low. So what I kind of pointed out in the beginning um, was about $62, which qualifies you for the free paper and is still really reasonable to make. What are we making? We can make 48 cards with this. Um, so I don't know if you if you're an, a, a big spender like me, you may want to add the bling and the ribbon, but we'll we'll get there in a second. OK, so there's that basic layout for this. Okay, I'm going to set that aside. I'm going to grab another scrap piece of white because remember, we're assuming we have white. Actually, I'm not going to use that full piece. I'm going to literally grab a scrap piece. Um, so tip number here. Here's a scrap. Let me just cut this down. Tip number five, and this is a bonus add-on. You don't need this, but it's going to make your life easier if you're mass producing, and you'll see this in a second. Um, but having a stamp positioning tool is going to be your best friend. Okay, so for me, I am using, so this is an add-on. This is not included in the the kit, but a lot of you may have a stamp positioning tool, like, um, I forget what the, uh, I think it's a Misty. This is the Stamparatus, so this is the Stampin' Up! version, which I must say that I love. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and use this to help me with my stamping. And the reason why this one is really important with, particularly with this um, stamp set, is because we want a really nice dark penguin. So this one doesn't really matter where I position it all that much. Well, I lied. It does because you want to be able to make sure you get it in the same spot. So I'm actually going to do, I don't know why I put that on the cardstock. I don't want to do that. I'm lining where I want my cardstock to be. And I probably should have, let me cut this down to size. Hold on. Sorry, I'm not making sense. So you want to cut your cardstock to a roughly the size you want for your penguin. I'm going to do, let's do two and a half by three and a half. Okay, so you'll cut all your pieces to this size. And then I'm going to go ahead and place it in the middle of my Stamparatus. I'm using the foam plate here, the foam mat, because my stamp set, I believe actually, yeah, is um, acrylic. So if it was red rubber, I wouldn't need this mat, but because it's acrylic, the acrylics are a little bit thinner, so you need that little lift. Okay, so I'm going to use this. I'm going to just position my washi tape around where I'm putting that card or that cardstock, okay, so that I know exactly, whoops, I know exactly where to position this. Let me use one more piece, maybe two just so that I know exactly. This is why it's important to cut your cardstock all to the same size. Okay, so we're gonna do that. And we're gonna do this. And that way, when I'm done with this one, I'll know exactly where to put the next one. Okay, so that is just my guide. And then to hold it in place, we're gonna grab one of the magnets that come with the apparatus. And they are pretty strong, so I'm just gonna go ahead and put that down on my cardstock, okay? Now, we are going to do the little penguin, and I'm also going to need his little um, beak. Where is the beak? That's his feet. Oh, it's right there. Um, do, 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 do. Here it is. This one right here. Okay. I think, let me just look at the paper for a second. I think I might do a little bit non-traditional. Oh, what am I doing? I don't need this. I need my other mat. Hold on. So I'm just going to stick this here so I don't lose it. I'm also going to set this aside for a second. And then I'll figure out my colors. Let me um, cut a bunch of these 250s. Two and a half by three and a half rather so that I can show you how this will make your life easier. So we're cutting a bunch of these pieces to the same size. That's really important. That's not going to work. All right, let me grab another piece of cardstock. 
two and a half by three and a half is actually pretty good size, I think, for this as well. Let's see. Because, yeah, look, I have very little waste there. There's three. Two and a half. By three and a half. So we'll cut that. I just kind of randomly pulled that out of the top of my head, but it's actually going to work really well. And then this one, this piece, I'm going to actually cut it three and a half because look, it's already three and a half. So if you do two and a half, two and a half, three and a half, it goes all the way across your eight and a half by 11 paper. And then I'm going to cut it two and a half on this one. So it's going to give me a lot of pieces out of one sheet. I'll cut it, count it up in one second. And I did not do a lot of waste. So again, we're making the best use of our card stock. So this was all I wasted, right? And I wasted, but I'll probably use that for sentiments. And I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten out of one sheet. So that's very resourceful, right? Okay. I'm going to need those in a minute. Next up, we got to figure out what color I want to do the feet. And then we can get started. So let me look at one of these guys. Um, they kind of did like... Um, Let's see. Oh, maybe. Oh, you know what I might do? I might do, I think it's Calypso Coral, but there's no coral in the paper, which is why I'm kind of stuck. I might actually do non-traditional and make his feet freesia, which is one of the colors in here. His feet and his beak, I'm going to do in freesia. I know, it's very weird, which means I need, um, so that would be my one ink color, and I'm going to make my scrap piece of cardstock freesia as well. So let me just grab a little scrap piece of that. Hold on, and then we can get started. Okay. So, first off, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that stamp that I had pulled out, and we're going to just position it anywhere on this. This is actually a bigger piece than we really need it to be. Actually, you know what? I'm going to put it towards the bottom because I need to punch it out. Actually, no. Um, let's see. Hold on. Let me think. i got to think about this because you do want to think about this to make it the easiest for you. Okay. Um, so we're going to punch him out like this, which is upside down. So I'm going to go ahead and put him upside down. So that when I put it in the punch later, I have this to grab onto to stick in from the top and he's upside down the right way. Okay? Because I'm probably going to punch him out. All right. So we're going to position that there. Then we are going to put it onto our mat. Okay? Oh, you know what I should have done before I did that? Hold on. Let me do that again because I need to figure out where his nose is going so I can put that on the other side. This is what's the great thing about the Stamparatus is we've got multiple little mats so that, so I'm going to want that there. Okay. Now let me see if I can pick these up separately. Where's my other thing? There it is. I don't know if I'm going to be able to pick them up separately. I think it's going to want to pick them both up. Yep, it's going to. So, let's just pull that off. Come off. Make sure we get it right about where it was. Oh, and there is a little bit of process with this. It's a little off. But once you get it set up, your life is going to be so easy. Okay, like, hmm, it's a little bit, ugh, now I did it again. Dang it. A little bit too low. Alright, like that. Nope, that was way off. Slightly over. Nope, too far. Okay, that looks good, I think. So I'm going to leave that there, and then I'm going to pick this up, okay? And then we're going to do a test. Oops, that just moved. I could, so I want to put it back in there, 
I could grab both magnets, but you do want to be careful because the magnets sometimes will cling together and then they bust. All right, so now I'm going to take my black ink. Now that I've got this set up, we're going to go ahead and we're going to ink up my little penguin over here, okay? And the beauty of using the Stamparatus when you're doing these penguins is you're going to be able to get those penguins nice and dark, okay? So we're going to do this. We're going to stamp him a little pressure on that and then lift oh he was pretty dark anyway so that works for that right then I'm gonna take my little um, fresh freesia and actually just because this little nose that I'm gonna use is kind of small I'm gonna grab a um, sponge dauber because it's gonna make my life a little bit easier so I'm gonna grab a sponge dauber ink up the sponge dauber and then I'm gonna go ahead and use that to ink my nose sorry I, have, I wouldn't have to move this generally but I wanted you to be able to see and then I'm gonna go ahead and stamp his nose hmm it looks like it's slightly off but let's try it I think he's off a little bit whoops okay looks kind of weird with the purple nose, huh? I was going to do non-traditional, but I think it needs to be, maybe coral would be better. Let's do coral. All right, I'm going to flip this over, do this again. I am going to move him, the nose slightly over. We'll try this again. So it, like I said, it takes a little bit of trial and error at first. I'm going to clean off my little nose because we're going to switch colors, but I'm using a darker color, so it shouldn't be a big deal. I'm going to use coral instead. That is in the paper. Um, and I may actually stamp it off since we're using a sponge dauber. I don't want it super dark. I want it kind of light. So I'm going to pick up the ink, blot it, and then put it on my stamp. Whoops, I need to stamp him first. All right, so let's try this again. See how we do. We're going to go ahead, ink up our little penguin okay we will stamp him then let me just uh where's my calypso I'm gonna go ahead and re ink that a little bit let's try that mm, it looks like it's still a little bit off let me just get it just right. I'm using the grid actually on my Stamparatus to help me. That looks good. Okay, so now I gotta re-ink that. I didn't re-ink it on the ink pad, so it still should be kind of light. Then we'll stamp that. Okay, there we go. That looks better. So there is our first little penguin, and now I've got it set up, okay? So, like I said, that initial lineup and thing that we're gonna do, it um, it's gonna take it a minute okay but now I've got it set up so I can go ahead I'm gonna pull that out I'm gonna put this one in get it lined up just right in those washi marks then we're gonna ink up our penguin stamp him the beauty of this is if I miss or I don't get good color, I can go ahead and re-ink it. Or if that wasn't dark enough, I just re-ink it, do it again, and it would be perfect. Blot that off to my nose. I'm going to try not to push too hard, otherwise I'll get the edging of that nose. There you go, that's perfect. Next. So can you see where this will come in super handy? Because I can do this over and over 50 times make it super easy on myself penguin and I probably could have used this without re-inking actually his nose and what's really cool is if you do want to add on the little um, stamp positioning tool the stamp apparatus that is $49 which means you could qualify yourself for another freebie for celebration if you got the bundle that I'm getting if you did the little like cardstock ink etc that I just showed you and then wanted to add on the stamp apparatus that's gonna put you 
um, over a hundred dollars, which means you could then get two reward items or you could get one $100 reward. But of course we want the penguin paper. So I would go with the two $50 rewards in that case. So you can see, I would just continue doing this and get all 50 done so that I'd have all 50 of my little penguins already ready to go. Okay. And then I would put this away. I'm going to just slide this off to the side here so we can continue. You guys get the idea now, right? So now that that part's done, I would take my punch and I would stick him in here like so. Oh, I forgot to say too that I assumed in your basic toolkit you have, um, what was I going to assume? Blocks. That's what I was going to assume. Sorry, you guys. Oy, too many things in my head at the moment. All right. So, so now this is coming together as to what I want this to be. Okay, and actually maybe I won't need ribbon. Maybe I can do this without the ribbon. We'll see. I want to do little feet though. So instead of, I had pulled the fresh freezer scrap, I ended up doing his nose and coral. So I'm going to pull the coral scrap. And like we said, we're going to try and limit the amount of stamping, right? So we're going to go ahead and just punch these. We're not going to um, stamp them and then punch them. If I was doing a fancy card, I probably would stamp and then punch. But again, we want this to be quick and easy. Come out. It's like stuck in the middle here. Come out. There we go. Okay. Um, you could use regular adhesive. It might be good to add on some mini blue dots. Just make your life a little. Well, this is my new one. I'm not quite done with the old one. Hold on. I like to use up one before I start another. Woo! Okay. So I'm going to grab these because it will make my life a little bit easier. I'm going to just stick that down. And these are $5.25, you guys, so they're not super pricey. So you could add it to your bundle, but it's a, it's a nice to have, not a necessary. And we're going to do this one. And we'll stick his feet like that. Okay, how cute is he? Oh my god. I know I'm going to pop him just because I'm going to. That's just a given. So let me grab some dimensionals. Again, I'm assuming you have pop dots or dimensionals. Of course, if you don't, you can go ahead and add those. Oh, I don't want to peel that off because I'm not really sure exactly what I'm doing. So now I need a sentiment. Okay. I haven't put anything down, you guys. I'm just kind of playing here. Once I design it, then I will go ahead and mass produce because one of the key things or one of my key tips for you in mass producing is to figure out your design using whatever you ordered in your bundle and then um, you will kind of assembly line it. So you'll cut all your cardstock, you'll stamp everything, and then you'll assemble everything, okay? So this is that. Now I need a sentiment. Um, Let's see, we've got, it looks, it's like a little, except a lot. So we have happy birthday season's greetings to the coolest friend ever. Be cool, be chill, be merry. I like you a lot. That's cute. Lots of thanks. So um, this is going to be a holiday card, but I do like to have some that are not specific to, a, you know, Christmas. So I could use season's greetings. Maybe I'll do that and do a little flag. I could do that. That could work. My only problem is he seems kind of floaty right now. So, um, but I'm trying not to add any more cardstock than I already have. I could put it on a white maybe. So let me just think about that for a second. So we could do season's greeting that way. Or we could do that, um, what was the other one? Be cool, be chill, be merry. I like that one. And maybe, yeah, I think I'm going to use that one, and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do to add a little bit more substance to the card. So let's go ahead and use that one. And we have that Calypso Coral ink, because that was the ink we ordered for his nose, right? So using the coral ink, and I have scrap piece of coral. So you kind of do need the card base color, but you could use white card base if you wanted, and then just order the coral as your one cardstock color in the bundle. And then I'm going to use coral cards. Actually, no, you know what? I'm not going to use coral ink. I'm going to use the black ink 
Remember, we assumed you had that in your stash. I think most of us have it, but it's going to stand out a little bit more on the coral cardstock because coral is kind of um, a darker color when it comes to cardstock. So I'm going to just stamp this anywhere, being mindful to be resourceful of my piece of paper. And I'm going to grab my scissors. You could totally use um, the, oh, I like that idea, Becky. I like that idea a lot. I'm going to use the white, but I'm going to do, um, instead of a curve, I'm going to do torn so it looks like um, uh, snow. Sorry. All right, so I'm going to cut this out, but hang on before I do this, because I'm going to need my snow in place first to know where to put the sentiment. All right, so let's just go ahead and do that. I'm just going to rough cut it, but let me go ahead and grab a piece of oh look at that's perfect okay so I'm gonna take this little scrap piece of white because remember we're assuming you already have white cardstock I'm gonna cut it down a little bit cut off that those punch pieces and then I'm gonna tear it so I'm gonna just pull it towards me this is really super easy to do you don't have to stress about it okay I'm gonna do this like so we're gonna put him here like that so he's sitting in a snowbank okay and then I'm going to go ahead and trim these down a little bit. You could use your trimmer, but I'm just going to rough it because it would be something I could sit in front of the TV and do without really thinking too much about it. And then I'm going to cut them apart. Again, probably, actually, you know what? Maybe. Maybe, because we're trying to keep this super simple. So maybe I would just do this instead keep him here do that or I could do just direct to the cardstock let's see I would love to use some wink of Stella um, especially for the snow right um, it's not in our basic kit but I think everybody needs it that could be a you know staple right you should just have that on hand because yes and then I could use him Let's see. Sorry, I'm thinking this out, you guys. Wait, I told you, we're going to do this together. Let me just try this and see if I like this better. Um, I'm going to use the black again. Whoops, I think I squished too much. Nope. All right, so then we're going to do this. Whoop, it's kind of crooked. There we go. I'm going to go ahead, I'll use my trimmer on this because I want it to be really close. I think the dog just farted, you guys. Oh my god. <laughs> it's Jinx in here. Holy crap, she's on the other side of the room. <laughs> oh my goodness. Wow, I'm thinking, what is that smell? It's my dog. Crazy puppy. <laughs> she's been a little better today. I don't want to put it like, I want to put it down a little bit so you can see that that's kind of snow-ish. So yeah, I'm thinking like that. And then we'll do a little banner end in this. Again, this is probably a little fussier. I probably shouldn't do this because you guys, we're mass producing 50 of these. So I have a hard time with simple though. But I think that's easy enough for me. If it's not easy for you, then don't do that part. Okay, so we're going to do that. We're going to do that. Okay, I do feel like I want ribbon. You guys, most of you have ribbon as part of your stash, right? <laughs> um, I'm going to do, I feel like I want something minimal, because I don't want it to be big and fluffy. Let me see if I have, I'm going to do, I'm going to even do white. Although tying ribbon, you know what? Tying ribbon 50 times is not going to be my favorite thing. So we're going to do the Wink of Stella, even though, okay, we're going to do that because it's going to add something. I feel like we might need to fill in this space a little bit. So we're going to use Wink on the snowbank. So make sure you add Wink because you know what? Everybody needs a little Wink in your life and it's only $8. Okay. So my little basic kit is turning into a little bit more okay 
that's easy enough to do. We're going to do this. Um, I feel like I want to do a different color. And I think I want to do this. You guys have colors that are close to this cardstock, right? <laughs> I'm so bad at the minimal product thing. It's hard when you have a whole craft room of stuff. Right? Uh, I'm going to cut this with my trimmer. Okay. It's all basic stuff, though. It's just cardstock. Most of you... Whoops, I did not cut that very well. Let me cut it first. So, I'm going to do this. I cut that totally crooked, and now my whole thing is crooked. Let me even this out. Both sides are crooked. You guys... I'm going to make it just a little bit bigger. This is why I should just use my scissors. It'll be easier. All right, let me cut, stamp that again. Okay. Like so. Okay. There we go. Then I'm going to just keep it super simple. I'm going to trim these on the little dots. that. Um, I'll trim it off so you can't really see it. Make them both close. Like that. And then I'm going to do Be Cool. Trim off that dot. Be Chill. And Be Merry. I'm liking it, you guys. This works. Alright, so we're going to do that. We're going to do that. I'm going to do that. Again, it doesn't have to be exact. Okay. And then our last step will be, where's my bling? Just add some bling. Okay. So we've got the Wink of Stella and the um, embellishment. And I think that will be enough to make it look cute. So let me go ahead and assemble. Yeah, I liked the Fresh Freezer better. The, cal the Clips of Coral was just not working for me. So I did pull in an extra color, you guys, but I'm pretty sure... You probably have some cardstock that would match the paper on hand. Okay, I'm gonna pop this piece too. So we're gonna pop that up. Thank you. I'm glad you like it. Okay, yeah. Wink of Stellar is like a must-have, you guys. It should be in your basic toolkit. So basic toolkit suggestions from me: bone folder, paper trimmer, adhesive, paper snips, and Wink of Stella. Okay. All right, so there's that. Now I'm gonna put my snow down. And you guys, I've designed my first Christmas card. Woo woo! And this will be one of the ones I'm probably gonna use because it's pretty simple. Uses minimal product. Makes best use of my pattern paper. I did use my little Stamparatus, which you don't have to. You could totally do this without the Stamparatus. Um, and then I think I'm gonna pop these up too. I'll use minis for that. Oh, I forgot. These are staple pieces too for your basic toolkit. Maybe I should do a little post on what I should, what you need for your basic toolkit. Although, again, I think most of you have that. Do you guys have a basic toolkit? I have like a little, um, well, now that I'm not really as mobile as I used to be, I don't really kind of set it up as much anymore. Although, um, I used to have it ready to go all the time. I used to have like a little, um, pouch. It may have even been a 31 pouch, Miss Emily, um, that I used to have like all that stuff in there. Be cool, be chill, be merry. Okay, so we're going to do this. Put that up here. Be cool. Be chill. Yes. Super simple, you guys. You could even do like a longer sentiment if you wanted them to kind of be sitting on the sentiment. You could do that too if you don't have this. Or if you have um, like a nice big frilly fonty kind of um, sentiment, you could put that in there. This stamp set just didn't have anything big and like bulky to fill that space. I think that would have worked too. I think that was what was bothering me with that. It was just too much open space, especially without ribbon. So this works great. It gives you a little bit of um, glitter. And we've got... Oh, he's so cute. All right, and then, oh, I keep adding things to your basic toolkit, you guys. This, take your pick tool. Yes, a basic black marker is good too, Sonny. 
Um, this is a good tool to have in your basic toolkit. But again, it's probably more of a nice to have. It's not a necessary. All right, so what color should I add in here? I could do this color because it's kind of um, like this green. And I think that will be good because we've got a lot of purple going on now. So let's do that. I could do the darker green too, but I think I'm going to do the lighter one. Do you guys love how I talk this out in my head? I'm going to do, let's do one big one. Like down here. And then we'll do the two smaller ones up here. Like that. There we go. Okay, there you have it. What do you think of my first Christmas card? Super simple, you guys. It's probably simpler than I would normally use, but again, we're making 50. This would be easy enough to do 50 of. Even if you don't have the stamp apparatus, it's easy, okay? Um, because they're clear stamp stamps, you could get that little nose right where you wanted. Probably a lot easier than I did when I got that set up, right? Um, but once you got it set up, you're good to go. And I think the thing is, even with one pack of paper, you could just use a different pattern in the background. So you could do, even though you only have enough for 12, using the two sheet, I'm sorry, 24 using the two sheets, you could use a second pattern and they could all be a little bit different that way, which is always fun too. So it gives you that variety you're looking for too, so that you're not getting bored looking at the same paper the whole time. So there's card number one of six designs that I will need to get um, to fifth or 300 so like i said i usually do about 50 of each and then i will move on to something else because it's just a little bit easier for me and my little brain so there you have it again my five to or six tips for you pick a simple design be resourceful in your cutting so keep your measurements like three by four two by five and a half something that's really super simple um keep stamping to a minimum so all i stamped was the little penguin and his nose and my sentiment which is still probably more <laughs> than you wanted. The penguin and the sentiment would have been great, but he really needed a nose, right? So we had to do that. But I didn't stamp his feet, right? So that was good. Stay away from die cutting when you're mass producing. I know, gasp. And then make use of a stamp positioning tool if you if you need to. And then assembly line it. So once you've got all of this design, now that I have this design, I'm going to cut all the pieces and then I will stamp everything and then I'll assemble everything, okay? So um, what do you think? Should we... What time is it? Oh, it's almost three. I have a meeting at three. I was going to say we could try another one, but maybe I'll hop on this weekend and show you one with the version using the little strip. Because this would be another card you could totally case, right? Using a two by five and a half inch piece of that pattern paper. Um, you could use the same base or you could use white as a base this time just to kind of give it a little bit of a flip flop. And then you could use the um, soft sea foam as your mat if you wanted to. But you could totally kind of case this design too and maybe... Um, make this square piece a little bit smaller so it doesn't you don't have as much space space to fill with your penguin but i'll do another design featuring the two and a half by five i'm sorry two and a, two by five and a half i had that backwards and i think that would totally work too and that's another really easy one to mass produce i wouldn't fussy cut i probably wouldn't do bows because those are no fun when you're doing bunches, right? Stick to kind of embellishments. You can do um, ribbons sometimes, but it depends on what your um, love-hate relationship is with tying bows and whatnot. But there you go. There you have it. So remember, if you place a $50 order right now, we're in celebration and you can get this adorable paper for free. You guys, it is so cute. And I have a feeling it will probably go on back order eventually because it is just adorable, right? You could do so many fun things with this pack of paper. And then just pick one of the colors in it to be your coordinating one. The Fresh Freesia would be a really good um, pack of paper to add to this. Um, the Soft Sea Foam is the one I picked. There's Misty Moonlight. There's, um, this looks like a uh, a little bit like um, pool party, but there's not a lot of that color anywhere else where there's moon, misty moonlight. So I would stick to one of those probably. Soft sea foam, fresh freesia, um, misty moonlight. Or you could do the garden green too if you wanted to. Um, but I just feel like this paper is so fun to work with. And it gives a lot of focal image to the project that you're doing. All right, you guys. Yes, please case away. I can't wait to see your versions. Go ahead and share them on the page. I would love to see it if you copy it. So let me see what you do with it. All right, guys, if you have any questions or you need help with an order or figuring out what you need for your holiday cards, please feel free to reach out. I'm happy to help. I love doing that, actually. So um, give me a shout. All right, have a great week, and we'll see you again soon. Bye!